Hello. In this video, we'll take a look at the convergence properties of sequences on a node space and define the concept of a Bana space. As usual, a sequence is an ordered set of elements, and uh, now the members xk of the sequence belong to the normed linear space x. For a sequence on a normed space, we define the convergence of the sequence as the property that there exists an element x such that uh, the distances between the elements xk of the sequence and the element x converge to zero as the index k grows. In terms of epsilons, this means that for any epsilon there exists a limit index n epsilon such that the norm of the difference x minus xk is less than epsilon whenever the index k is larger than n epsilon. And if the sequence converges, then the element x is called the limit of the sequence. One very important point to note is that whether or not a given sequence converges is crucially dependent on the choice of the norm on the space x and therefore the convergence really is a property of the normed space and this is something that we'll also see in our examples later that a sequence may converge with respect to one norm and not with respect to another and that's why it's also quite risky to use notations like xk to x or lim xk uh, on, in the case of general normed spaces but both of these notations can be used whenever the choice of the norm is clear from the context. And on general normed spaces we can also define another weaker convergence type property of sequences and in particular a sequence is called a Cauchy sequence if for large enough indices the distances between all of its members become small and this is required to happen in the sense that for any epsilon we can find a limit index n epsilon such that the norm of the difference between any two members xk and xm of the sequence is smaller than epsilon whenever both the indices k and m are larger than n epsilon. And this property can in a bit more compact form be denoted as the property that xk uh, the norm of xk minus xm converges to zero as both k and m converge to uh, grow without bound and one important thing to note in the case of Cauchy sequences is that it's not enough that the differences between two consecutive members of the sequence become small and instead the Cauchy sequence property is a strictly stronger requirement which requires that xk with a large index has to be close be very close to all other members of the sequence which are which appear much later in the sequence as well And so at this point we have two convergence properties on a normed space. Of these two, the Cauchy sequence property is strictly weaker in the sense that any convergence sequence is also necessarily a Cauchy sequence. Uh, this claim has quite a simple proof. If we begin with a convergent sequence with a limit x,
and let epsilon be arbitrary, we can by definition find an limit index n epsilon such that the difference between the norm of the difference between x and xk is less than epsilon over 2. And if we now look at the norm between of the difference between xk and xm, we can add and subtract the limit x from this expression and then use the triangle inequality uh, to estimate this upwards. And what we get is that the original distance is bounded from above by the distance between xk and uh, the distance of xk from the limit uh, plus the distance of xm from the limit. And both of these for indices k and m, which are at least uh, greater than n epsilon or less than epsilon over 2. And this really show this simple argument shows that the distances between xk and xm really converge to zero as k and m grow, and thus the sequ convergence sequence we started out with is also a Cauchy sequence. So every convergence sequence is a Cauchy sequence as we saw but the converse is not true on a general norm space. But uh, still, a norm space can have this very nice property that every Cauchy sequence also converges to a limit x in the space. And this property is called completeness of the space. Moreover, a Banach space is precisely a normed space which is complete. And if we look at the definition it seems a bit like a repetition that it seems that we're introducing two different terms for a space where all Cauchy sequences converge. And there's a reason for the, this is actually true but there's a reason for this. Be, uh, this is that the concept of completeness is actually a bit more general and it also applies on spaces which are not necessarily normed spaces but more general spaces and Bana space really particularly refers to a normed space which is also a complete space and on this course we use both of these terminologies and one way of viewing the definition and concept of completeness is that the Cauchy sequences on an old space are really ideal candidates for sequences which should converge since the distances between their elements become arbitrarily small for large indices. Um, this way the completeness of a space guarantees that sequences have well-defined limits in the in the same space and especially we'll see in our examples that sometimes we can even picture where a given sequence should naturally converge but this limit may sometimes happen to be outside the space that we are considering in which case the space is not complete The property of completeness of a vector space is also very useful since it's typically much easier to prove that a sequence is a Cauchy sequence instead of proving directly that it converges. And especially we can note that the definition of a Cauchy sequence is based only on the elements xk of the sequence which we typically know for, from a sequence Whereas the definition of convergence of this sequence also requires that we actually know what the limit uh, element x of the sequence is. And 
because of this completeness of a space is very often used for precisely arguing that it, since a given sequence can be shown to be a Cauchy sequence and the underlying space is a Banach space, the, the same sequence must also, must also have a well-defined limit which also belongs to the same space. Before going into infinite dimensional spaces, we can note that finite dimensional Euclidean spaces Rn and Cn are in actually examples of Banach spaces. And this is because, as you might remember from earlier analysis courses, that on an Euclidean space, a sequence converges precisely if it is a Cauchy sequence. And um, a bit deeper result in the same direction actually implies that these Euclidean spaces are Bona spaces and complete spaces, irregardless of the choice of the norm we we have make on the spaces and in fact all finite dimensional norm spaces are unavoidably complete spaces for infinite dimensional spaces we have as our first result that the sequence spaces l infinity and lp are both Bana spaces when equipped with their natural norms. The proof of this result is presented in the lecture notes and it can also be found in many textbooks. We won't go over it in detail in this video, but the proof is also extremely educational since we are now required to study a sequence on a sequence space, meaning that we actually have at our hands a sequence of sequences. And this is something where you definitely need to be a bit careful and keep your head cold, but in the end everything really works well according to the definitions. So if we start with a Cauchy sequence xk, on the sequence space LP, then by definition every element XK is an element of the space LP. This means that every such element XK is a sequence of complex numbers and we can for example use the superscript notation for indexing this sequence xk and this is not at all obvious so you should definitely take some time to think about how it works and uh, get familiar with this this notation and make sure you you understand understand how it works but it's also worth pointing out that this is not the only way we can we can index the sequences xk and we can use different kinds of notation for handling this type of situation where we have a sequence on a sequence space. And uh, what you can do definitely is try and see which op option of, uh, of the available you you find to be the most natural choice for yourself and you can also surely come up with different notations for for this type of a situation. Uh, the only main rule here is that you should always be consistent with your own notation and of course also define clearly w what kind of notation you are using. 